are consistent when it comes to Smash. But it's nice to see that these two lads remain at the top when it comes to fusion, no matter who they have to fight through and no matter which characters they're playing. But here, they're at the very least going to lead in with their mains on Pokemon Stadium 2, which is a pretty traditional set for these two. Yeah, this is... It just feels like, I don't know, right, I guess, to see both of these... Uh, both of these two go at it and grow off of each other. A lot of times, Jackal will... Sh uh, ooh. He'll struggle, oh, yeah. with, he'll struggle with a character like Rob, who can poke at exactly all of uh, Jackal's innate weaknesses because he can take so many hits and be so safe while throwing out so much uh, dangerous stuff that you have to watch out for. Especially for a player as aggressive as Zamba, who despite uh, taking a stock with a two-frame, was already in Jackal's face. No, well, I'm gonna take this time to ask some, some meta questions. Hit questions me. outside of just this game one. Why do you think we're always seeing Stadium 2 as the start between these two? Uh, it's pretty good. I like it. I think they like it too. Um, well, well, my question to you is why do you think Jackal's okay with it? I feel like in this kind of a stage, like Rob is able to play this stage up so effectively, from sharking the plats to denying center stage to making the ledges so dangerous. I feel like Jackal's just caught in the rhythm of going into this stage. Like it. You know, it's PS2. Why wouldn't we start there? What's yeah. the worst that can happen? And on paper, right? And of course, always on paper. Wolf does perfectly fine here. There's nothing about PS2, the quote-unquote true neutral, that heavily favors Rob compared to Wolf. But it's how it plays out that always results in spots like this. So maybe you do start looking for a stage like Smashville instead to be that counter pick, because right now things are not looking as good. You find that up tilt for a stock at 163, but you're you're fighting you're fighting an uphill battle almost constantly unless you find hits like these. But Wolf's combos end in damage, while oftentimes Rob's can end in stocks. Yeah, Rob has a very strong tendency to make combos go for damage, and that damage leads to position and kill. And even though Jackal's handling the second stock just fine. He's still fighting off on his last, like, he has to continue to fight tooth and nail because one little interaction at the ledge, and that could be it. Yeah, it, right there with that seven frame active spike, that could have been all she wrote, but just missing it, giving Jackal a second lease on life. Yeah, what, and what started out so good with some really solid tech chases and jump callouts has given Zamba a chance to survive and keep on thriving here. Going with these, going with these lasers and swatting Jackal out of the air repeatedly. That he catches him with that dash attack on the on the roll away. Flutters aside. I love the flickering. Like not only does it look silly, but it's also really optimal. It gives you so much control of what you can be doing in the air. Although it didn't give Zamba enough control to be able to find a strong landing. It's gonna be tied stocks, but. They're in a really good position for Zamba to just end it all still. 95% on Wolf and constantly bringing the battle into the air or towards the ledge just looks really good for Rob. Not able to find the down throw into the F tilt. Oh, good off. I was mm. so ready to, like, it was a great way to play around Gyro and a great way to get back to ledge. Holy moly. Jackal is fighting with tooth and nail. But you cannot escape the inevitable. That is Rob Nair. It is run from it, dread it. It will always come. It's a bit of a slow move, though. So like a little bit. You, you, you can move a little out of the way or shield. Yeah, I mean, it's it's inevitable in the sense that Rob players will go for it, and as and if you respect it, that is when it's at its. <laughs> it's at its best for the Rob player and at its worst. Whoa. Why are we back here? Uh, y your guess is as good as mine. Um, and granted, it wasn't looking too bad towards the end of the game one, so might as well keep going. And if you practice your combos enough here, it's a great parry on that same Rob and Eric. Good, uh, good stuff from Jackal to try and keep what was working so well in the latter half of game one into this game two. Like on one hand, like, this stage works out really well for Wolf in most situations because Blaster and Forward Air and Nair gives so much lateral control. Even from center stage, like, we're seeing back air take that stock. 
but it requires you to be ever present. You need to be able to control this entire stage. And Rob has a tendency of being able to steal little bits and pieces of stage. If he just gets the ledge or just gets one platform, that's enough for Zamba to completely take over Pokemon Stadium. Oh, looking for the down air as a means of reset. That was so cute coming out from Jackal, but as he saved his jump, he manages to get back to stage and roll right through the arm rotor. No worries, no problem. And now we get to see Jackal on the flip side of the game one shenanigans, which is, yeah. How do you, how does Rob reliably approach Wolf when Jackal has been playing so quick and ready to pull the trigger out of shield? It's gonna be rough for uh, for Zamba to get something started when he's already at such a massive deficit. This has been such a good adaptation from Jackal. He's just making sure that Zamba doesn't get to play the game. And if he's trying to be on the stage, he's paying the price by way of big damage. All right, we see the down throw going to the up air, but he falls out of it, which you already see Zamba just shaking his head and it roll right off him. But this game's getting, it, it's getting a little bit out of control. And so even the up throw won't kill. Wow. I'm surprised he didn't go for forward throw laser like he typically does these higher percentages. Sucks for him, I guess. <laughs> yeah, rip. But <laughs> landing fair, these are massive percentages, which you would think would make it even, but wow, lingering there. All right. Yeah, I mean, you're at 200. <laughs> yeah, this match is far from even because Zombo just can't seem to catch a break. He's not swinging in the right spots. He's not grabbing in the right direction. And he's and getting hit he by does... three of those in a row, bro. <laughs> Like, he's just eating so much damage because he's just fighting the wrong way. Like, don't get me wrong, Rob Buttons are big. I feel like I don't need to share that with you. Uh, he's... <laughs> he's not with it, okay. Yeah, it's like, all right, this this game's just slowly tumbling out of control. And it, it's the type of thing where they're in, ga in individual games, there's a couple instances and a couple matchups and quote-unquote plays where it swings one way or the other. And everything was just going wrong for Zamba in that game too, just like it was going wrong for Jackal in the early part of game one. So just refresh, reset, we're still going to PS2, and it's still game three. Not losers quarters, this is winners finals. Yeah, no, this, th this was a match that looked far more convincing from game one to game two. And it's so interesting how like lopsided the games were. Although I guess that's just indicative of how talented both of these players are and a testament to why we see them every Monday. Yeah, they they learn and grow off of each other every single week with uh, with Jackal and Zamba basically trading sets and trading fusion victories. But it's it's gonna be it's gonna be on it always feels like it's on Jackal to prove that he can do it. Because whenever Zamba looks good. He looks really, really dominant. Yet this game is not indicative to that uh, swingy mentality. Is this is dead even at the start of this game one? All a matter of finding that magic hit near the ledge. I feel like the fact that both of these players are opting to have a lot of these interaction happen near the platform is just really smart decision making because they're able to trade for damage and it's not that big of a deal. But nothing's too dangerous yet. Full hop around, and he challenges. He challenged Rob Nair just as he should, and finds yet another roll in. Something that Jackal has been progressively punishing harder and harder as the set goes on. Uh, he's been punishing you with pivot grabs, and that time an F tilt to take the stock. Though a phenomenal recovery. He was in a rough spot, and he finds the high wolf flash to keep his stock alive. And Wolf can certainly put on the damage, and a wolf with rage is no slouch. But that should do it. Yeah. Plenty of percentage built up on the situation, but it still brings us to a dead even. Jackal opting to hop around in center stage, though, I think is a really good call because it's going to force Samba to do something to shake him away from that good positioning. Look at these parries, by the way. These parries are absolutely huge, and the extensions on the platform, resetting resources and keeping the damage alive from 0 to 90. Oh, hello. It gets that up air and oh, the laser as well to keep him keep the pressure going and keep the full stage, the full screen uh, offense intact. Goes on to trying to make something big happen here, but he's not going to find it just yet. Constant resetting, builds up that damage really well. I will bring up, Gyro hasn't had too much of a place in this game three, which we almost never see from any uh, game involving Zamba pressing forward. 
Yeah, it, it just feels like it either gets parried into disappearing or blinked out of nowhere by Jackal. But he finds a pivot grab of his own and the stock. Yeah, it's, token firms are huge. They're huge in a matchup and in a game state that is as tight as this one. And Rob has them has more than a few. Definitely. He's able to make magic happen off of just one stray hit, especially when you consider the tools that Zama's constantly poking with, be it narrowed down tilt. Finds that grab. Wolf back throw. Nothing doing here, but in a spot like this, how how important oh. what how important was that ledge trap and that kill right there, Hangman? It's looking real good. It's like this game is just maintained being dead even. And as a reminder, that's the three still. Like, oh yeah, the pressure's on for these lads to have that comfort of being in Winterside Grands. Especially given how this set has gone, it's it's going to be a tight one. Should uh, the should the loser make it back via winning in Winners Finals? But you know, statistically, we do see that happen quite often. Yeah. Just as it's, often as we, choose, we see these guys as winner finals, we do usually see it as grand. And, and it's Zamba punching his ticket into that winner side grands after after a rough string in that in that last in that last stock, getting hit from zero to fifty. Zamba took control. He we saw a lot more gyro usage where if Zamba, if Jackal was gonna parry it or throw it like out of off screen, shoot it again, spawn it, just keep keep up the amount of things that Jackal has to think about. So things like up smash out of shield will catch those landing aerials and close out stocks.